Oh, I'm so excited to introduce you to Braca Getz today. We are going to talk a little bit about overcoming overeating joyfully, which I am sure our listeners' ears just perked right up. And I think we're going to get straight to it, Braca, that you are a Harvard grad and you've written 40 children's books. What? So welcome. <laughs> Yes, my new my new book just came out this week. I'm really excited. Yes. Let's oh, stay yes. let's stay healthy. Yes, let's celebrate together. That's awesome. Is that the title yep. of it? Is let's stay yep. healthy? Yep. Let's stay healthy. Also helping children to understand why junk food is really bad for them. Like, I mean, it explains other things too, why exercise is important, why it's so important to move, why sleep is important, you know, why, why, why even cleanliness is important because we don't see all those germs, you know, they're invisible. And it, I, I try to really explain to children because people just tell children what to do, but they don't give the like the, even the scientific explanations behind it, which children can understand if, if explained to them in a simple way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So walk us through your book that's coming out this week. Kind of give us an idea. It's obviously visually oh, stimulating. Oh, I'm going to hold it up. Let's stay healthy. There oh. we go. <laughs> I'm very excited. The, the, you know, what happened is actually all my books have been published by traditional publishers. And when um, some parents came to me and asked me to write a book like this, our children are just loving junk food. They don't understand why they shouldn't be eating it. So can you explain it? My background is in, I, I was actually, I went to medical school after Harvard. And while I was even at Harvard, I was taking school uh, classes at the uh, Graduate School of Public Health. So I'm really into explaining in a, in a simple way, in a public way to people so that they can understand concepts. So um, this book, in, uh, instead, when I wrote the book, my children, my youngest children, they asked me, instead of going to a traditional publisher this time, they wanted to open a publishing company and start publishing my book. So this is the first book that they have wow. published. It's really exciting. And also what happened is, I mean, my children are grown up. So yeah. um, these are my youngest children and they gave birth um, to their first son the week they delivered my a son and the book the same week. So it was quite a week. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. So grandbaby on your end and your book all happened. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I just came back from Houston. Um, I was there and it was really exciting for the birth and everything. But now we are, we are just working on the book. And it's my, it's amazing. My daughter-in-law is just loving to work on this, holding the baby in one hand and working on <laughs> publicizing the book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shout out their public, um, their publishing company. Oh, the Getz Bookshop. It's, it's our last name. The Getz Bookshop is brand new that they just opened this publishing company. It's hysterical. So the timing is really interesting, but that's how it happens. You know, <laughs> uh, timing is timing, right? It is never <laughs> how we think it should be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> never perfect and i actually think what a cool story somehow and somehow it is perfect but we don't see it that way you know what i mean <laughs> right yes it was on purpose but not on your not on your timeline <laughs> oh and i want to say that i just love love the name of your podcast oh. <gasps> direction not perfection i mean this is it everybody everybody <laughs> this is the most when i saw it i can't tell you the joy i felt that you so get it. I, I, I had like anorexic behavior patterns at one point, and that's why I was like fluctuating between binge eating and anorexic. So I so understand that trend toward perfectionism, and then, mm -hmm. and then, then people um, when they when they when they overeat and then they feel, oh, now I blew it. So now I'm going to blow everything. That's the other side of that perfection idea. You know, they just, right. they want to give up. And if, if they can't do it perfectly, then I'm not going to do it at all. And right. it's so, 
I, I just love your title because it says so much at once. It, it gives a huge message out to the world, which is mm -hmm. that we're just all moving in a direction. You know, we're all just we're trying to be better people. And however we do that is good. You know, <laughs> you're so sweet. And I love that you resonate with it. And I do feel like through podcasting, there's this group of individuals where I'm like, I think more and more people are getting it and they're coming out of diet mentality and we're like recovering from diet mentality, but it's still going to be a while. And that's why I love that you're writing children's books because it's that generational thinking and changing where I don't think we'll totally see it in our generation, but I think that our kids will start to see it and their kids will start to see it through things like your book where that's what they'll be listening to. That's what they'll be looking at. And it's, that's amazing too. So yeah, that's yeah. why I write children's books. I yeah. want to write the books I wished I had as a child. That's my goal. You know, I understand that children can get deep concepts, complex spiritual messages, even as a child, they can absorb them yeah. as long as we explain it in a simple and clear way and a joyful way, then it gets absorbed. That's, uh, <laughs> And yeah. you are so joyful. I'm sitting here with like this perma <laughs> grin on my face. because It's like Friday energy at its best. I'm loving this. I can feel it through the video screen. It's oh. awesome. Uh, and I Thank think kids so need to much. feel that too. It does need to be joyful. It needs to not be this. Um, I, I'm sure you've heard this. Don't should on yourself. And I think that like we're doing that to kids sometimes. You should do this. You should do that. That's how we should be, should act, should. And and through this messaging, like what you're doing, it's a it's a choice for them. They get to listen, learn, and then make a choice if that fits in their, Beautiful. you know, yeah, Beautiful. in their belief system. Yeah, exactly. I I I heard of a study, a research study, that said it takes 400 repetitions to build a new habit. It takes a long time to get a new habit. But if we do it joyfully, 10 to 20 repetitions and we've got it down. That's why like they teach children in songs and they teach children in a joyful way and with us too. So like if we want to inculcate new good habits into our life, the best way to do it is joyfully. And I think I think that's what you're all about too like all these shoulds and restrictions how long can a person keep up restrictions in their life it's just not going to happen so so what i'm my message is add more joy to your life people people um like like food was meant to be joyful it was designed to be joyful it could have been that we just took a um a tasteless pill every day for for nourishment but no it was designed to be joyful like delicious and nutritious and smell good and be juicy and wonderful all these natural foods so so if we experience the gratitude of all these natural foods you know like an apple like it's made so perfectly and individually packaged like amazing that's how we got the idea you know and like mm -hmm. oranges they keep that juice in for months it's amazing yeah. so and then, the, and then within it are the seeds of infinity. They just keep reproducing forever and ever. It's like so beyond genius. So if we recognize with gratitude all these natural foods as gifts to not only uplift our bodies, but also uplift our souls, because that's what gratitude does. Um, if we recognize that, then we could recognize why do we overeat? because we want the pleasure that we're experienced to keep lasting. Um, so what we have to do is recognize all the other pleasures in life. And if you don't want what, what I'm enjoying sharing is about the pleasure ladder. It's, it's based on ancient mystical wisdom, but I think it's, and it's, it's, it's for universal because the five levels of the pleasure ladder they correspond to the five levels of the human soul so the lowest level are all the physical pleasures which involves intimacy music nature the natural foods 
and all of them are designed to uplift our bodies and our souls. So all the physical pleasures. And if you want, I, I, I could, you want me to go up the pleasure ladder? I do. Come? Yes. I think our okay. listeners are going, tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, great. So the second level, the second highest level is love. And this definition of love that comes with this mystical wisdom is it's appreciating the virtues of another. So that means it's not waiting by the phone for someone to call you and feeling badly. It's totally empowering. It's it's you focusing on the virtues of another, which a person can do in prison. A person could do it any place. They don't even have to be with the person and feel that warm emotional feeling of love just by appreciating a grandmother, somebody that once did something amazing for you, it fills you with love. That's a more lasting pleasure than even the natural physical pleasures. And then moving up is meaning. Doing something positive and meaningful gives even more lasting pleasure in life. Even higher than that is creativity. When we put a part of ourselves out into the world, we really, we, our soul really shines then when we do something creative like that. And the highest level is transcendence when we recognize it's like full gratitude. We recognize how we're all connected. We're connected to everything, every person. We, 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 it's when the veil of separation is lifted and we see how we're all connected to source and all connected to each other. And so basically each level up brings more gratitude and more connection. And that is what brings us lasting pleasure. That's how when we recognize the abundance of all these pleasures, we don't need to overeat because we're overeating because of the sense of scarcity, not enough pleasure in our lives. And this is immediate pleasure. So we just keep going. So once we, we, we fill our consciousness with the sense that there's an abundance of pleasure, that is how we overcome overeating joyfully. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. So just to make sure that we're all hearing this correctly, everything's important on the ladder, but as we go up the rungs, it's that much more pleasure filling, correct? Exactly. More lasting pleasure. Because like when you, you remember being under a starry, starry sky at night, you have that pleasure with you always. You can always access that pleasure at any moment. It, it's lasting, it's still with you. That sense of being a part of the vast universe and just being a part of it all. This stays with you and you can access it and with gratitude and in, it can uplift you at any moment. So yes, the pleasures, the, the pleasures are more and more lasting as we go up this, the, the, the spiritual pleasure ladder because the, really the purpose of all these physical pleasures was to uplift our soul as well as nourish our bodies. So that's what we're doing. We, uh, there's a beautiful quote. I saw it recently. I don't know who said this. I wish I wrote it down. But the emptier you are inside, the more you feel like seeking externalities to fill yourself up. Mm -hmm. So the more we can fill ourselves up with natural healthy foods, with love, with meaning, with creativity and connection of transcendence, then we don't have that, that we don't have that urge to overeat junk food. I mean, it's like gone. It's because like once in a while it may recur, but it's, it's just not a part of our lives anymore because our lives are filled with all this joy that is totally empowering that we can bring on ourselves at any moment. Oh, I am loving this, Bracca. I feel like that where I'm immediately transferring this into like my daily work is that a lot of the women that I work with have spent so much time going through life and doing for others that they start to slowly lose themselves. And sometimes we even get to that point where we don't know what we even do like for ourselves anymore. And so I'm just picturing this kind of like emptiness going on of what you're describing. And then needing to, and we talk about this, but like refinding those things that fill our soul. And that's your rungs right there. Like it's, it's figuring out, am I not using my God-given talents? Am I not uh, socializing and like happy spot? So it just, it's interesting because you tie this back into like, how do the five rungs relate with food and overeating? 
And I know you're already saying this, but do you even have a little bit more on that as far as like your recovery and your journey? Because it feels to me as if that was in your past and now it's more of like at a maintenance phase for you. How did you get there? Yeah. Yeah. The, the key is gratitude. That is the key. It's the key for every rung on the pleasure ladder. It's all about gratitude. So basically, if we eat this, first of all, it's hard to just notice. Do you feel gratitude after you finish the whole bag of potato chips? It just doesn't fill you with gratitude. But like, how many apples can you eat? It's just not going to, you're not going to overeat apples. They, you feel the gratitude. You feel the vitality. You feel the connection to source. And you could feel it even more if you focus on it. Start the moment we start adding more gratitude to our lives. That's what fills us up. That is really what fills us is gratitude. And one of the techniques for that, yes, I was gonna ask. it's, been, it's <laughs> yes. been so helpful, is chewing slowly. Oh my gosh, it's so basic. But like, I was always, you know, and especially if you're binging, I mean, you're just stuffing it in as fast as you can. So let's say you have a spoonful and you, you don't pick up the next spoonful or forkful until you've completely chewed it up slowly and swallowed it. And then you don't pick, you just, it's so easy. You just train yourself to not pick up the spoon and, to, and guess what happens? You're there and you are focusing on it and you start feeling gratitude. You go, oh my goodness, I'm actually tasting this. And, and, and you, you know what, what's so funny is we only tasting, we're only getting pleasure from these physical, from physical food for like, a few seconds while it's yeah. in this little space. Once it's going down the windpipe, we're not even feeling that pleasure anymore, you know? So keep it in, Ex make the pleasure last. And when you do that, you experience gratitude. It's like amazing. It, be it turns into a spiritual experience by chewing slowly. Is that amazing? <laughs> and, and then, and from there, we can learn to chew everything in life slowly, like just, sit with it, you know, be with it, be more present, more mindfulness about each moment. And that's how we savor pleasures and feel gratitude. Have you always somewhat been mindful or has this been a very much learned um, experience for you? That's a great question. I was a person who began suffering, like, okay, so my memoir, Searching for God in the Garbage, is about how I developed the food addictions and then mm -hmm. how I healed from it. It covers 20 years. What happened is I found my old diaries. So, the, so I didn't write this book. I don't like writing long books. My books are all short picture books. This book wrote itself because I just compiled it. My diaries, my journals, then letters, letters home. And so it goes through the whole transformation. Basically, I call it like a psychological mystery. The, the reader goes through it with me. And you see me slowly developing these food addictions as my soul began starving for spiritual nourishment. That's what happened. I started to feel it, it began at age 12 that I began to feel something was missing in life. Like I couldn't believe, is this all there is? We get up each day to people go to work, to make money, to buy food, to go to work, to make money. But what's it for? What's the purpose of all this? So I began searching and I tried so many like spiritual disciplines and I tried, I mean, experimenting drugs, relationships, you know, just trying everything out until I went to education. Okay, I'm going to study really hard. And I got into Harvard searching for wisdom. And I heard this line that like, we are, we are drowning in information now but we're yeah. starving for wisdom. That's what we are. We are mm -hmm. starving for real wisdom. And, and this is ancient wisdom that I found from my own tradition, which I didn't even know that my own tradition, which is Judaism, was spiritual. That's, I wasn't brought up that way. And so when I discovered it, I was so enriched and my, my soul felt full in a way that it never hit that empty place again that it was at. So it it's from then on, 
I, I was always searching for mindfulness, but I didn't exactly know how to get it. You know what I'm saying? And this gave, and now, and now also in Eastern religions, there are aspects of this too. And I love yoga very much also. And um, it, what we believe is that um, these are traditions based on ancient uh, Judaic wisdom that were passed on to the Eastern religions as well. So it's all connecting. And um, basically all this wisdom is available to help us, this spiritualism to uplift our souls and help us live joyful lives. We, we were put here, what I learned from my tradition is that we were put here to experience gratitude. We've gone so far off from that, but that's really what our purpose in life is to experience gratitude. That's, that's our role here that's what we were created for to experience the joy of being in this amazing garden that's that's what the world is <laughs> yes that's so beautiful um i've never worked or been to i've heard this though going down the spiritual route or religious wherever people kind of settle in and feel comfort in but when overcoming addictions or eating disorders that a lot of time there is a spiritual component built into these programs Right. And I feel like you had mentioned that in something that you and I are going back and forth on. Can you talk a little bit on that? Exactly. It's it's the basis of all addictions. With food addictions, it's just so obvious because we're filling ourselves. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and the the analogies, the metaphor of starving for that nourishment is so clear. But it's true with every other addiction. Um it it, it comes from and in fact, people that are addicts yeah. are usually extremely sensitive people because they, they, they feel that lacking. They feel the lack of spiritual nourishment in them and they're trying to fill it. There are other people that don't develop addictions that are in a sense um, less sensitive to what they're missing in life. And they could go <laughs> ahead with life like that. But I find that the people that develop addictions, food addictions and other addictions are very sensitive souls. And we need this, um, we need this, the spiritual sense is really, it's the connection to our core, it's to our real selves, it's to our essence, and it gets lost. Like the title of my memoir is Searching for God in the Garbage. We get covered with layers of garbage. We have inside mm -hmm. of us this pure soul that is as bright as ever, but it gets covered with garbage. And so the light is dimmed. So we need both. We need to nourish our hungry souls. At the same time, we may need, like you are available to help people, a coach, we may need a therapeutic intervention, someone helping us to remove those layers of garbage from abuse, from neglect, from trauma that people have been through. It covers their beautiful soul, which is still in there. And souls are infinitely resilient. We just have to nourish them again and then remove the layers of garbage that are preventing them from shining. Yeah. Yes. I've literally had chills the entire time you've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love your message. <laughs> well, I, I'm not surprised because I resonate with you immediately upon seeing your podcast. So I, I expected our souls to resonate totally, you know? <laughs> I wish we were not across in a screen. I wish we were sitting side by side <laughs> and just sipping tea or coffee together. Oh my goodness. Yes. So I guess this is a hard question and maybe hard for somebody else to hear, but do you feel like ultimate healing cannot happen without some spiritual, you know, undertaking going on for the person who is just really has up their blockers and saying, I don't believe I I'm not there in any, any religion, any spirituality, woo woo, whatever. Like I'm so, this is so not part of me what for that person do you like where do you go with that yes i i would say first of all there's so many people don't like established religions you know oh no oh, this is like organized religion so i say to some people oh you like them disorganized right is that i don't know <laughs> no but the point <laughs> is it's not, you know it's it's been organized that's great whatever you know people want to do their own thing beautiful it's all about gratitude you don't have to call it spirituality just fill your life with gratitude and 
To me, that's spiritual. To me, that's letting your soul shine. But you could put it in any terms you want. Just fill your life with joy. There's an abundance of abundance of ways to be joyful in this world. And that's the main message that I want to get across. And we eat because of, we overeat, I mean, because of a sense of estrangement, loneliness, stress, scarcity. So we got to fill our lives with joy and gratitude. That, and, I mean, the path to joy is gratitude. And, and, and so j just do it, you know, do it every moment. Every moment you can be, focus on all the illnesses that you don't have this very moment or all the body parts that are working right this minute. Just the fact that you're breathing. I mean, in every moment, here's life, here's life. We're giving life, we're getting life. We're, we're, we're interacting, we're connecting with all the vegetation around us. We're, it's, we're completely, you know, it's a synergistic relationship. It's something awesome is happening. So we just got to focus on the awesomeness. We're missing it, you know, but if we wake up, we will see it. And then, and then life turns into a joy. There'll always be challenges. That's what we're here for. Like I have this saying, um, um, here is a test to find out if your purpose in life is complete. If you're alive, it isn't. We are here because we've got challenges to grow and, and that's what we're here for. Um, so it's not necessarily always easy. Climbing a mountain, you know, may, may be hard and challenging, but it's a joy if we enjoy doing that, you know? So, yeah. I agree. I think that people get a little bit mixed up in like joy, happiness. You know, there's all these words that we use, but true joy. I mean, you can be going through a really hard time in your life. I remember we were literally, my dad was dying. We were at in the hospital with him and laughing and having joy on his bed, playing some games. You know, it was one of those moments where you're like, this is crazy, but we were all joyful at that moment. So I think that again, it's like taking out expectations. And then we had a psychologist speak on this too, but shifting expectations of like that expectation of never coming upon hardship or never having that. You're right. We have it, but how it's our reaction to it. And beautiful. You were focusing yeah. on the joy there. Yeah. You, you were yeah, not focusing just... on your loss or what you are lacking. We can all the time, every minute, there is the self-destructive impulse working on us to make us feel what we are lacking. And that's a good thing because it's working on us to build our, what I call gratitude muscles. It's working. And so when we, you know, in exercise, you have to have a force against it. That force telling us that we're lacking is for us to work back and say, but look what I have, look what I have. And it, the, as the gratitude muscles get stronger, it gets more and so easy. It really does to be grateful. And then you'll have more challenges. Here's a new challenge to be grateful, right. but you can do it. Yeah. Yes. It builds on each other. You keep using the word fill. And so I would just want to throw this little conversation out there and let your creative brain go with it. But we talk a lot about filling love tanks um, and, you know, how we, we have multiple things throughout our life that give us joy, that bring us gratitude. And I could see this even as a children's book. I had a designer in one of my groups. We were having this conversation. I was like, why don't you just visually give yourself buckets? Like, what do those buckets look like in your life? My marriage, my kid relationship, my me time. And she ended up like developing 10 beautiful buckets and filled their lines of where and how filled she was in each of these areas of her life. And she was like, it's really interesting because I started thinking I was only going to have like five buckets. And then when I even hit my 10, I thought I could come up with 20 different reasons of what it could be filled. But to visually see that and go, wow, like this bucket's overflowing and this one is bone dry. And it just, I think that we don't take the time and you're also saying this to just sit and build insight to just understand what's going on. Like we live in this crazy busy world and it's really easy to just kind of go through it without that pause of what's really going on here, you know, where that's the gratitude part too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We have to pause, but to smell the roses, to 
let's not miss out every moment we can experience this joy it's available to us now like a person shouldn't think you know um if i'm in an abusive relationship i shouldn't feel grateful about it no feel grateful ab about all the other things in your life that will give you the strength to move on from the abusive relationship yeah. actually because it's self-compassion the more gratitude we feel we are boosting ourselves letting ourselves shine that's what gives us the strength to move on if if something wrong is happening it doesn't mean being grateful for whatever happening and staying you know in something that's wrong or a job that's abusive whatever we don't have to do that but we can be grateful for so many other things in our life and that that helps us to shine and do what's best for us in life right i love this so just coming back to our original podcast title if we choose to use this but overcoming um overeating joyfully you're you're saying gratitude like that is the true the secret ingredient the yes that's yes. the ingredient exactly right when we fill ourselves with natural foods also i mean there's not much room for the junk we experience this we have a really when when our souls get filled up there's just not we don't need to overeat anymore it just doesn't happen we don't have that you know or let's say let's say you're at some place that's uncomfortable once in a while it's very rare for me but let's say i go to a party i don't know many people i'm not feeling comfortable and i feel like just you know, cruising through the food because I don't know what else to do with myself. So then it has to come to my mind. This happens not often anymore, but it'll still come to my mind. Okay, what could I do to bring myself pleasure right this minute without overeating all this food, which isn't helpful? Mm -hmm. I could eat something helpful. I could go outside. I could feel the fresh air on my face. I could listen to the music. I could stretch. I could dance. I could find somebody lonely that looks like they would like me to talk to them right now, reach out to them. All of these things will fill my soul. And guess what? The table of junk won't be calling my name loudly anymore. It just it just stops right then and there because you are filling yourself up. You'll notice this. If you give it a try, you will see how amazingly it works. Or one other thing is I say, if I if I feel like I'm overeating, I say, is it my body that's hungry or my soul? It gives it 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 shifts the energy from the amygdala, the the uh, reptilian baby brain, all the way to the prefrontal cortex where you start thinking your consciousness. Oh yeah, I'm um, it's 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 I'm, I'm not eating out of fear or sadness or disappointment or love. Oh yeah, so something else could fill me up. You could put a list on your refrigerator of, of what brings you joy, other activities you could do right that minute. Um, just push a button, play the music, start stretching, leave a text message for somebody telling them what you appreciate about them. You don't even have to talk to them or just, and all of a sudden, you don't feel that need to overeat. It's amazing. Try it and you'll see how it works. These are awesome <laughs> tips. I love it. All right. We all want to celebrate with you in this release of your book. Where can our listeners find your book? Okay. So if you, the best thing is you go to the Gets Bookshop, their brand new website that my children created, they'll be thrilled. Or and, and they have from there you could get all the books that are on Amazon. They're all in one spot on Amazon. They have the links to all my books on the Gets Bookshop. This is my first time saying that because it's brand new. So mm -hmm. um, you could find it there. Of course, you could find it on my Amazon author page too. But that's where everything is. And and you can always contact me. My contact information is there too. Thank you. Well, that's <laughs> what I was wondering. You know, we have holidays coming up, and I'm picturing any grandparents with grandbabies coming into the world or just moms and dads is there a way that if you were to do like a personal inscription to get a personalized book do you do anything like that yes exactly sign okay. my books and, and i've signed a whole bunch of books while i was in houston so anyone that orders soon actually gets a signed copy right now <laughs> awesome <laughs> yay oh my goodness so great meeting you do you have any oh. last You've already poured so much words of wisdom over our listeners, but any last minute things that? I'll share 
because I love that Jeff Bezos, you know, the CEO of Amazon said, everything I have ever done has started small. I, I get a kick out of it because what's bigger than Amazon? I mean, it's like, you know, so everything I've ever done to start, but just start with one, one moment of thankfulness and see where it takes you, you know? Oh, yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> Thank you. Have such Thank a good you. Friday. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay, so much. Thank you. <laughs>